If you've ever seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm a Toyota guy. My very first car was a Toyota. Way back when cell phones looked like this and only made phone calls. The year was 1994. Jim Carrey had three movie releases in the same year. White Ford Broncos were permanently seared into your memory. Biggie dedicated his inaugural album to all the teachers that told him he'd never amount to nothing. And me? I bought a secondhand 1991 Toyota Tercel Coupe in red. And it was stick. I drove that thing like I stole it. This is me, a skinny awkward high school senior hanging out in the school parking lot instead of going to class with my Tercel in the background. Don't do that, kids. As glad as I was to just have a car, my dream car back then was a 4Runner. 27 years later, I finally got a 4Runner. Better late than never, I guess. Welcome to another episode of, hmm, I've never thought about that. Today's story is Looms to Land Cruisers, a brief history of vintage Toyota trucks. When you hear the name Toyota, you naturally think of one of the largest automakers in the world. But they didn't always make cars. Toyota as we now know it is the culmination of decades of vision, passion, and perseverance. So if we're going to be talking about the history of Toyota trucks, we really have to start at the very beginning. Our story begins in the year 1867, in what is presently Kosai City, Shizuoka Prefecture, Japan. Ikichi and A. Toyoda had a son that year, Sakichi. That's right, I said Toyoda with a D, but we'll get to that part of the story a little bit later. Oh, also, Sakichi didn't actually look like that when he was born, obviously. This isn't the curious case of Benjamin Button. Damn but I look a lot older. Ikichi was a farmer and a well-respected carpenter, and Sakichi began learning his father's trade at a young age. Even as a child, Sakichi wanted to create something new, something that would benefit the people around him. At some point, he became interested in the hand looms used by local farming families and endeavored to make a more efficient loom. In 1891, at 24 years old, Sakichi received his very first patent for the Toyota wooden hand loom. And that's how it all began, with a manual wooden hand loom. In 1926, Sakichi founded Toyota Automatic Loom Works Limited, presently Toyota Industries Corporation. Yep, they still make looms even today. So how did Toyota go from looms to cars? Sakichi and his first wife had their first and only child in 1894, a boy they named Kiichiro. He became fascinated with automobiles and eventually persuaded his father to expand the family business with a concept automobile division. Shortly before Sakichi died, he told his son to follow his dreams in pursuing automobile manufacturing. Kiichiro began setting up shop in 1933. And two years later, Toyota produced its first prototype, a sedan known as the Model A1. However, the first Toyotas that were available to be sold were actually trucks. The Toyota Model G1 debuted at a motor show in Tokyo in November of 1935. A month later, it was made available to the Japanese public. Nowadays, the brand Toyota is synonymous with the word reliability, but that wasn't the case with the G1. In fact, the show cars that were driven to Tokyo were packed with spare parts in the event that something failed, and apparently a couple failures did occur. Early purchasers of the G1 really just wanted to support a domestic automaker and were willing to put up with the breakdowns. To do right by their customers, Toyota would send design engineers from the factory, along with the repair team, to learn which parts required the most attention. Of course, all the repairs were free of charge to the customer, and Toyota even replaced the entire truck when needed. 
The G1 was a rear-wheel drive, one-and-a-half ton truck with a two-door cab and featured a 3.4 liter inline six-cylinder engine that produced 65 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. In 1937, the Toyota Motor Company Limited was established. So why the slight variation in name? Most of the reason behind that name change lies in superstition. You may or may not know that the number eight is a lucky number in most Asian cultures, and every culture has a different reason why that is. In Japan, the number eight is traditionally written this way. Because the character broadens gradually from top to bottom, it's said to symbolize growing prosperity. In Japanese hiragana, which is a phonetic lettering system in Japanese writing, Toyoda is written this way, using 10 strokes. But if you eliminate the two dashes at the end, you get an eight stroke word, pronounced Toyota. Growing prosperity wouldn't come right away though. In the same year that Toyota Motor Company was founded, the Japanese began a full-scale invasion of China. During that Second Sino-Japanese War, the Japanese government restricted automotive production in favor of products for the Imperial Japanese Army. Those restrictions would continue through World War II, and during the war, Toyota produced several different military trucks, some of which were four-wheel drive. Toyota was able to start production of automobiles soon after the end of World War II. But with lingering anti-Japanese sentiment around the world and a rocky domestic economy in Japan, Toyota's sales dwindled, leading to Kiichiro's resignation in 1950. Sadly, Kiichiro wouldn't live long enough to see Toyota become successful. He died in 1952. His cousin and confidant, Eiji, would take the reins and transform Toyota into a globally recognized automaker. After the war, Toyota completed a prototype of a quarter-ton truck that they called the Model BJ, but most people referred to it as the Toyota Jeep. I mean, look at it. Since the name Jeep was already a registered trademark of Willys Overland, the name Land Cruiser was adopted in 1954. One year after the birth of the Land Cruiser moniker, Toyota began producing a second generation of these Jeep-inspired 4x4 vehicles, designed for the civilian market. The FJ20 series of Land Cruisers were produced to compete with offerings from Jeep and Land Rover until 1960, when they were replaced by the FJ40. This iconic generation of Land Cruisers were produced all the way until 1984, except in Brazil, where they were made until 2001. Then came the FJ55, nicknamed the Iron Pig in 1967. There would be many more versions of the Land Cruisers to follow. If you're interested in Land Cruiser history, you should check out the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. The museum features over 100 examples of the venerable Land Cruiser, from a 1953 BJT all the way up to the 200 series Land Cruisers and pretty much everything else in between. And although the most current version, the 300 series, isn't offered in North America, the Land Cruiser legacy lives on in the rest of the world. Around the same time as Toyota adopted the Land Cruiser name, they began producing pickup trucks. This family of trucks would later be known as the Hilux in most of the world, but the first model was dubbed the Stout. Although a few iterations of the Stout sold relatively well in other parts of the world, it wasn't very popular in the US. For a brief period of time, the US market had a Hilux, but Toyota pickups wouldn't gain notoriety until the 1980s. The Hilux name was dropped in the American market, and we just called them the Toyota Pickup. In 1985, a Toyota SR5 Pickup was featured in the hit movie Back to the Future, with Casey highlights and all. Toyota Pickup truck offerings in America eventually evolved into today's Tacoma and Tundra. 
Everywhere else outside of North America, the Hilux has endured through several generations, including the current model that has been around since 2015, the eighth generation Hilux. Let's back up though and take another look at Marty McFly's SR5, also known as the fourth generation Toyota pickup. Toyota fans probably know that the fourth generation Toyota pickup looks very similar to another Toyota model. Named the Hilux Surf in Japan and some other markets, we know it in the US as the Forerunner. The first generation Forerunner was basically the pickup with a removable camper shell, rear seats, and the bed area had interior panels. Just like the pickup, it only had two doors. The Forerunner is currently on its fifth generation, with a highly anticipated sixth generation due sometime in the near future. And it's about damn time, since the fifth gen Forerunners have been around since 2010. What in tarnations? If that ain't milking it dry, I don't know what is. Who knows what the future holds for Toyota trucks as automotive technology continues to improve and advance. Perhaps one day we'll get a Mr. Fusion Power truck to build as an overlanding rig. And that'd be pretty sweet, because Lord knows you find enough garbage out on the trails. Regardless of what technological marvels lie ahead, vintage Toyota trucks like the Iron Pig will always have more character and hold a special place in my heart. If you enjoyed this episode of, hmm, I've never thought about that, hit that subscribe button and then watch another episode here, or watch a different one of my videos in this playlist. Thanks for watching. Always remember, destinations don't matter, the journey matters. See you next time. This is Roger, over and out.